Hey, what's up to everybody? So, um, it's a Thursday, and um, I'm actually getting ready to go to work. Yes, that's right. I have to fly today. Um, this wasn't on my schedule originally. I had to pick this up in open time. Uh, somebody dropped it in there. There was actually two trips in there. One to L.A. and back to Dallas, and then one to Detroit and back to Dallas. And I wanted the L.A. one because it's a little bit more hours, but somebody else picked it up, picked it up over me because they're more senior. And so now I'm flying this one to Detroit and back. Um, I'm flying with two people I do know. Uh, one's more senior to me, one's junior to me. The person who's most senior to me usually flies in the back, so I'll probably be flying lead, which really doesn't make any point because it's not a lot of hours. It's only um, a five hour, maybe six hour um, work day. So at most I'll make 13 extra dollars. Yeah, not much, but hey, better than nothing it's more money on top of the check that i'm getting which is not that really big but hey it'll do um i really wanted the la trip but hey it is what it is but um i need to go ahead and finish up um iron up, up my stuff um it's an afternoon trip and i'll be back tonight hopefully i always pack extra clothes just in case it gets stuck definitely in detroit um and everything like that so I'll have some extra clothes and take my laptop just in case I need to do some other stuff. But anyways, pretty sure it's gonna be a light flight and we'll see what happens next. All right, man, let me get that ironing. My iron is already like, hey, are you gonna use me or not? So, all right, check in with you later. Hey, so crazy, crazy man, crazy night, man. Uh, not much filming during work, but there's a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Everything like with everything going on, so you don't want to see all that. But I'm gonna hit you up once we get back to the house. I'll let you know how my day went. <sighs> That's better. Just chilling on the porch balcony. It's uh about seven o'clock, seven thirty. And uh obviously this is after I did my turn. Um, definitely not the same night. Got in probably like uh, 10 o'clock or so and um, I just uh, didn't feel like doing anything so I got home definitely took off my clothes kept the shoes away from everything put the bags in a certain area I know if I had a house um, most of the stuff would have been put inside the garage and left there and, um, put the clothes inside of a plastic bag until I could put it into the wash and stuff like that. But since 
I live in an apartment. It's kind of hard to do that, right? Um, so definitely, I, I never wear shoes inside the house. Um, you never want to attract dirt or anything from outside into the house as much as possible. Um, but mainly, definitely not from the plane. Definitely not from the plane. So I always leave my shoes at the front door. People's air conditioner is going off right now. It's it's a nice day today. Um, but yeah, going on back to the um, clothes. So I just I basically took the clothes and uh, put them inside a, a bag where I keep all my other clothes from the hamper and stuff like that. And uh, just leave them there until I can go wash or need to wash. Really, don't need to wash because I did like three loads the other day. So got all clean clothes not like I wear a lot of clothes nowadays because I ain't got nowhere to go um I didn't do a lot of videos during the um the flights the two flights that I did if you know I went from Dallas to Detroit and back to D D Dallas and it, it was a it was an interesting type of two flights as usual, like I told you, I, was like, uh, I knew the people that I was flying with. One senior, one junior. Of course, I predicted the senior was going to pick to fly in the middle of the aircraft or work in the middle of the aircraft as far as boarding. Um, and uh, they, she flew B. That's just our middle of the aircraft position. And... Um, since I was the next senior person, I chose to be lead, to be up front, attending and walking and seeing every single person who walked on the aircraft, potentially COVID-19 infected, don't know. But, um, and then the other person, choose I mean, we kind of knew, kind of knew what kind of positions we like to do, so it kind of worked out, panned out just right. And, uh, so that's that's what happened, man. and then going up to Detroit, I think we had 31 passengers, um, 31 passengers, and it was, it was plane held 182 people, and I mean they could spread out. But of course, families want to stay together and everything like that, so it has. Um, I'm surprised. I know the airline is making it way to where the middle seats aren't occupied but when you're sitting up front where there's only two seats on um, either side it's like do you take one seat out or you know what I'm saying from people sitting there or do you just let it be weird but um usually so you know there's a couple people up front that were having sitting next to each other and stuff like that a lot of people have masks. A lot of people wear gloves. Um, people still don't know how to wear masks, right? It's weird. It's the weirdest thing. And, and <laughs> us as flight attendants, we sit there and laugh at you because you're not wearing your mask right now. But you think you're protecting stuff. So, I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure everybody else is laughing at you, too. So, wear your mask correctly. Right? Might have to do a tutorial on that. I mean, really, where I had to put on the mask. Ah, the birds are chirping, the birds are chirping. Yep. Down here, just drinking on some sweet tea. Actually, it's not sweet tea. This is, uh, uh, I forgot the name brand, but it's uh, Hibiscus Lemonade. It is the greatest ever. All right, back to the passengers. Going up to Detroit, nice and easy. We don't do service anymore. Um, you have to hit your call bell and let us know that you want to purchase something. And I think probably so, probably like four or five things on, on the entire flight up to Detroit, which was two hours, a little bit over two hours, two hours and four minutes. Um, and so we didn't sell that much. Um, with 31 people coming back we had 
67 passengers, I believe, 67 passengers. And let me tell you, we sold a lot on that flight coming back. I mean, people were, for some odd reason, coming down to Dallas. It's not like we was going to Vegas. A lot of people drink. Um, a couple of people order food or snacks, should I say? And um, but they they tried to order all flight, and the flight was two hours and forty minutes coming back down. I'm like, it was like ridiculous. We had to cut some people off. I'm like, hey, you're you're drinking too much. Sorry. And believe it or not, flight attendants have the right and the ability to cut somebody off. I mean, where else are they going to get the liquor? So, um, yeah, we had to cut some people off. So just know that if you're going to be drinking on the plane, watch yourself. Don't drink too much because drinking in the air is twice as... It hits you twice as fast and hard than it does on the ground. Um, case in fact, like say that you live in, in Florida or somewhere on the coastal area where the elevation is zero, go to Denver. The elevation is a mile high. You won't be able to drink as much as you think you drink. Trust me, you won't be. Um, it's uh, so yeah, man. And and these people, for some reason, the passengers on the way from Detroit were either already drinking. That reminds me. Of They're already drinking, so they've already had some drinks. Well, they came on high. I believe the entire plane had a small, distinct airflow of marijuana. I think all of us had a, like a small buzz by the time we got to Dallas. It was ridiculous. Like so many people who came on the flight were high. Another thing, when we <laughs> it, it kind of scared them when. Um, we told them about coming into Dallas that uh, one, they had to fill out a form that you saw everybody before they got on the plane and came, the gate agents, they did a great job of handing out paperwork for us so we wouldn't have to do so. But they handed them a sheet of paper uh, coming from Detroit down to Texas. You have to fill out this form and self quarantine for 14 days. If you're staying in Texas, point blank here. Um, so they were like, "Oh, do we have to fill it out?" Blah blah blah. And I kind of, I'll show you the paperwork that they. Uh, you don't see it. Um, I'll put the side here. So I don't know. It'll be up on the screen. But you know, there, you know, they had a lot of questions. It's a simple form. Like I don't understand. People just don't know how to read. Don't read, don't do directions, don't follow directions, just don't read. But simple form, simple plain, self explanatory. Um, that they had to fill it out if they're staying in Texas and what they have to do if they're going to stay in Texas and stuff like that. So a lot of them were like, well, do we have to fill it out? Blah, 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 blah. we're not staying at all. I was like, all right. So we had to tell them. And <laughs> they think it was a joke. It was, just, it was like coming from international, really. Because as soon as they got off the aircraft, before they walked out of the doorway from um, of the jet bridge into the, the airport, they were met by state troopers. And state troopers were checking the paperwork, checking their IDs, and seeing where and where where they were going to be staying at and stuff like that. Now, granted, it's weird. It's kind of like like I said, it's kind of like being an international. Yeah, so they uh, they got greeted by the state patrol, state troopers, and um, with this, this legally allows the state troopers to show up at the place that you're supposed to be staying to make sure that you're staying, like that you're being self-quarantined. And if you're not there, I, I think it was a thousand dollar fine if you weren't. I mean, come on, they have your they have your information, they have your ID. They, well, they don't have your ID, but they have, they've seen your ID, so they know it's been matched up with the name on there um, already, so you're not going to be caught in the uh, 
but yeah, man, that's, that's crazy, so, I mean, it's, that's what it is, and I'm not working in the end, which really sucks again, I don't have to work, well, let me put it this way, I'm not working because I have no trips on my schedule, but I was supposed to be working again, two more trips for the rest of the month, but being that all of our flights have been turned into turns, they've taken my trips away, put me on what we call time available, THJ, and basically if something comes up in the open time and nobody picks it up, then I'm one of the first people that they call. Well, with nobody really working, stuff in open time doesn't stay there. Literally, I remember I was going in and somebody was like, hey, I'm putting this trip in to the tray board. And literally, when, when people went to go look, they were like, it's not there. They are like, yeah, somebody already picked it up. That quick. So, uh, it's, it's crazy times. But we want to work because we need money and stuff like that. But we'll see what happens. Next month, I'm supposed to have trips. We already got our schedules for next month. Um, it's not showing up on my my app yet, but um, I kind of forgot that I have uh, vacation also next month. So I'm supposed to also kind of rebid for other trips that were dropped inside the month to pick up to make sure I had over 72 hours. Um, our guarantee. And I forgot about it. And then when I went there, I was like, oh, it was over. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what they give me. Um, see if I can still pick up some other stuff. I'll definitely have over 72 hours of pay. Um, actually, I probably wasn't need, even needed to be because I, with the 28 hours, oh, it depends on how many hours I lost with the trip, my vacation. But it's going to be another month just pretty much sitting there home drinking hibiscus lemonade and um, trying to figure out what to do with this I mean when you look in the camera you can still see some lines but man this is not how I like being my hair everybody knows every two weeks I get my hair done every two weeks like, almost like clockwork so this is frustrating to me I've been looking online, been looking at videos on how to, you know, do natural hair, uh, maybe curly hair. Um, we'll see. We'll see what I'm gonna do. Exactly. So, um, yeah, man, this is crazy times, but we're all in the pickle now, man. You know, we all got to do what we do. Um, Everything like that, figure out what's going to happen next, and uh, live this kind of like day to day, and everything. But uh, we'll see. In the meantime, man, I'm just going to chill, and uh, I probably need to try to get my bike up and running. We get to ride a bike around. The weather's nice here in Texas right now. It's, it's back up. Temperatures back up. It was uh, about mid 70s today. Definitely new new bike seat on my bike and air up the tires. Some WD 40 on the in gears. Ride this baby out. You know what I mean? Definitely be better on my foot since uh, walking four miles on my foot doesn't feel good when I get back to the house. But we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to let this go. Um, I'll sit back and enjoy the rest of my day. Uh, actually, night. And, oh, yeah. TV show just came on. And I'm probably going to watch that for the rest of, well, for the next hour. Kind of uh, see what's going on. All right, man. Thanks for watching. Um... I'm not going to go through the spill, you know the spill, and uh, for the person who's uh, watching and not liking, you know who you are.
appreciate you guys. Tweet, tweet.